In this video, we'll demonstrate how to populate the RAD combo box with data from multiple columns in a data source. To do this, we'll add a RAD combo box to our project and create a SQL data source referencing the customers table of the Northwind database. Then, we'll select three columns from the database to display in our dropdown and show how to set the text value of the combo box item to display meaningful data after selection. We begin our project by creating a new ASP.NET AJAX-enabled website. And if you don't already have the template to create this website, the last frame of the video will contain a link to the internet so you can go get your own copy. And we use this template because it automatically places an ASP script manager component onto the form for us. And that's important because the script manager maintains communications between the web server and the AJAX-enabled components on the client. And the next thing we're going to add is a RAD combo box to the form. And we'll just close up the smart tag for right now because we also need to add a SQL data source to the form. And the SQL data source will be configured to connect up to the Northwind database and we'll select the customers table from that database and all columns in the table. Then we'll finish with that. Go back to the RAD combo box. We'll set the data source to be SQL data source 1 and we'll also choose a different skin and I think we'll use the Web 2.0 skin. Now we could use the template editor to edit our combo box item template but it doesn't have a header template in here so we're going to have to edit in the markup page anyway so we'll just close the smart tag and go over to the markup and I'm going to place two templates in here that I've already prepared the first one is this header template and the header template is what's going to appear up at the top of the drop down portion of the combo box when it's expanded and that's just going to say company name city and title and then the second template that we'll paste in is an item template now the item template is going to contain company name city and contact title and it's going to do that by extracting these values from the data item that's associated with the row that's being displayed inside the combo box and as you can see we've set the width of these three items to be congruent with the header item widths and they total 375 pixels so that makes it necessary that we set the width to be 400 to allow for the down arrow on the right hand side. So let's go back over to design view and we'll select the red combo box and go to the event handlers and on the item data bound event we're going to add some code that's going to construct the text of the combo box item for us. Now it's important to note here that even though we've got the columns that are being displayed independently in the table in the drop down, this text value that's associated with the combo box item is completely independent of those entities. So what we'll do when each row is data bound is we'll set the text item to be the company name followed by a semicolon and the city followed by a semicolon and the contact title. And obviously what this will do for us is when we select an item, it's this text item that is going to be displayed as the result of the selection inside the combo box. So let's run our application. And when it comes up, you can see it's displaying the first item from our items collection. If we drop things down, it's going to display in the header the company name, city, and title, letting us know what these columns are. And if we select bottom dollar markets, for instance, then the item gets displayed up in the combo box separated by semicolons. So that is the method that you would use to display multiple columns in your drop down and then synthesize some information to display as the selected item text inside the combo box itself. For more Telerik videos, technical discussion forums, and examples, please go to www.telerik.com.